Ladies, Tchaikovsky, on stage. Morgan. In my life, to play Tchaikovsky is almost a very, very, very natural thing. All those melodies and all those things that the ups and downs and the turns that the concerto brings are very much a part of my blood. Maneuvers of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, familiar to all music lovers, sound new and vital and thrilling when played by Russian born Shlomo Mintz. Literally, when I was two months old, at first I plucked at it and I don't know, just looked at it. And eventually, when he was three and a half years old and living in Israel, he began to play it. It was like a part of my breakfast. Playing the violin, it was an entirely natural thing for me. to his father's dreams. But his biggest anxiety, or shall we say goal in life, was really to play the violin. And he was never able to because of his very unusual life. He was in Siberia for 18 years, a prisoner for being a Jew. And so he decided that if he's going to have a son, he's going to play the violin. And that's the reason why I had an instrument at the age of two months. I mean, you don't, you do not have many people who buy instruments for their kids at the age of two months. When the family was settled in Israel, Shlomo's father put him on a strict regimen, up at five so that he could practice before going to school. That discipline and dedication coupled with an enormous talent, have made Shlomo Mintz, at 30, one of the world's leading violinists. Shlomo played for me when he was 11 years old, and it was staggering. Zubin Mehta is the music director of the New York Philharmonic and the Israel Philharmonic. It was the first confrontation with a future hyphens, future Perlman, Zuckerman. It's a long line, it's a tradition. Those particular psychological moments are so important on stage when you see this practically desperate kid that is playing the very first phrase of a very, very difficult concerto by all standards and desperately looking at the conductor and the conductor smiles at him and tells him, you're okay, you're going to be fine. Just continue playing, just continue and do what you're doing. And that's exactly what it did in front of 3,000 people. Shlomo Mintz still has strong ties with the orchestra with which he made his solo debut, the Israel Philharmonic, and his first mentor, Zubin Mehta. He has returned repeatedly over the years to perform with them. Shlomo Mintz remains an Israeli citizen. 
His homes are in Germany, Italy, and New York. The reason for so many homes? So that his wife Corinna and their two sons can be as near as possible. What about you and your sons? Um, uh, do you think of doing the same thing for them, to them? But of course, my biggest son, well, that's the third violin he breaks. <laughs> it's very expensive on our budget. <laughs> uh, I suppose that a certain sense of tradition is going to be uh, transferred to him. But again, I would like to leave enough room for my kids and try to find out what do they really want to do in life. Shlomo Mintz, who is regarded as a great interpreter of the classics, recently gave the New York premiere of a contemporary work which was commissioned for him, a violin concerto by Mark Nykrug. It's not a relaxed work. And it helps knowing the composer in person to make up your own mind as to what sort of an interpretation you're going to give. It's a very interesting intellectual process, truly. And uh, eventually you get past that into the emotional side. When I'm performing, I know I'm very involved. Uh, I know that it's very important for me. I know that nothing else is important for me until the performance is finished. Uh, and I really feel that that's the way it ought to be. We cannot really have distractions when, uh, when we are on stage, when we are performing. Here, Shlomo Mintz is performing with a fellow Russian-Israeli, Yefim Bromfman. thing about your life right now? Happiness. Well, you get in. You are able to put everything in the right perspective. Life is life, and music is part of life. And that's really what it's all about.